everybody, Morgan with the Financer here, and today I want to show you how to build this PVC pipe carnival style canopy if it's exactly on top of a six foot folding table and transports really easily. So if you've got a school carnival or a carnival themed wedding coming up, this might just be the prop for you. So follow along and I'll show you how to build this. The frame of the tent is made from five 10 foot lengths of Schedule 40 one inch PVC pipe and I'll be cutting those to length using a pipe cutter as well as a tape measure and a sharpie and I'm going to start by cutting the longest sections first. So that's my 66 inch lengths and then I'll cut my smaller pieces from the pipe that's left over. In addition to the pipe lengths, we'll also need some fittings. So four three-way T's, four T's, and four 90 degree elbows. Once all the pieces are cut to length, the next step is removing all of this colored ink off of the pipe. By removing that, it'll make the spray painting process a lot easier. So I'm gonna be using some acetone here and paper towels to remove all of the ink. And this is a bit of a caustic uh, chemical, so do make sure you cover your hands with rubber gloves to keep them from being dried out and work in a well-ventilated area. So I'm gonna take a paper towel here and thoroughly wet it with the acetone and working in small sections, I'm gonna rub in a circular motion over the top of the colored ink. At first, the ink will look like it's smudging, but as you continue to rub in a circular motion, it will begin to lift up off of the pipe and onto your paper towel. So you do wanna keep your paper towel damp with acetone and keep moving to a clean section of your paper towel. So you can see here that my paper towel has like a purple color on it. Once you begin to see that, you wanna to move to a new section of paper towel as you continue to clean your pipe. After all the lettering was removed, I went over the pipe one more time with acetone just to make sure all of the dirt and residue were removed from the pipe. And this not only cleans it, but will help prepare the pipe for the spray paint. Now I've rigged up all of my pipe on some fishing lines strung between two workbenches of mine. I'm just going to wipe off the pipe one last time, make sure there's not any dust or dirt stuck to it because of static electricity. And I'm just going to be putting two coats of white paint on all of my pieces of PVC. And I try to do this in light passes. It's really easy to be heavy handed with spray paint, but you end up with drips pretty easily. So I'm just going to take this in light passes and then rotate the pipe so I can coat all sides of it. Then I'm going to leave all these pipes to dry for a couple days. So technically this would be dried to the touch within an hour, but because I'm going to be assembling and moving these around, it will be really easy to ding the finish. So it's best to leave them for a couple days to completely cure. While the pipes dry, I'm going to work on making the canopy. So I have two yards of duck cloth here or canvas, but you could use any fabric you like that suits your theme. Now, I want to have striped carnival fabric, but I couldn't find any fabric that had the stripes going from selvage to selvage that I was looking for. Most fabric on the bolt, the stripes go the full length, which is the wrong direction for this setup. So I ended up just buying white canvas and I'm gonna paint on my stripes in a moment. I'm cutting my fabric to 39 and a half by 70 and a half inches, which is just shy of that two yards. That was actually all I had left from my cut. So once I've got this to size, I'm gonna fold over my seam and make a three quarter inch seam using this handy dandy little ruler here. And I'm gonna pin that in place on three sides of my fabric. So two short sides and one of the long sides. The last long side leaves straight because that's gonna be the side we add scallops to. Once I have the side pinned down, I'm gonna take it over to the iron and press it flat and I'll do this for all three sides, but when you come to a corner, I'm just gonna be folding mine over flat in a very simple corner. Now, if you would like a nice miter corner, I'll link one of my favorite sewing YouTubers below, and you can check out her video if you want a really fancy seam. I'm a quick and dirty crafting kind of sewer, so I'm not too worried about having a fancy mitered corner here, but if it's important to you, do check out that video in the description below. And now we're ready to head over to the sewing machine to stitch down these sides. So I'm just gonna put the fabric right up against the edge of my presser foot, starting in one of the corners, and make sure you back stitch a little bit to lock your stitch into place, and then you're just gonna go all the way down the side. Now I had intended to roll under the raw edge here, but totally forgot until I was like halfway through sewing this, so I'm not too worried about the raw edges, but you can roll under that raw edge if you don't wanna see that. Now, once you get to a corner, what you can do is you slow down and come right to the edge of it, leave the needle down in the fabric, 
pick up your presser foot, hit the camera a couple times, rotate the fabric, and then lower your presser foot and keep going. And this will give you a nice crisp corner on your sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can secure these seams using some iron-on hem tape. And it's basically a double-sided adhesive that once you iron it, sets it, and that will work just fine too. Next is to add scallops to the canopy. Now this is an aesthetic choice that I've decided to make, but you could always just hem this side as well if you wanted a straight edge. Now I found the center mark on the long side of my fabric that is not hemmed, and I'm just using this plate as a template here. It's six and a quarter inches wide at its widest point, and this is just a dessert plate. Um, and I've put some marks on it so you can easily see the halfway and the quarter points on that plate. And I'm just gonna put it against the very edge of the fabric and the edge of my previous circle. So I'm just gonna line that up and trace it using my pencil. And I'm gonna come back with my really sharp fabric scissors and cut out all the scallops. And even if there is part of a scallop along the hem, I am gonna cut into the hem that I just sewed. But don't worry, because I'll secure that in a moment. But before we move any further, I'm going to press the entire canopy. Now, I hate ironing, but this is so important because we don't want to paint in wrinkles in a moment here. So take the time, get the iron out, and press the whole thing. I've made my canopy out of duck cloth, which means this edge will fry over time. And to prevent that from happening, I'm gonna apply a little bit of super glue to the edge. Now you could always use fray check to do this, but I had super glue on hand, so that's what I'm gonna run with. And I'm just gonna apply a thin layer to the very edge of the fabric. You know, make sure you don't glue this to your table as you go. But this little bit of glue will secure all the little edges of the fabric and keep it from fraying on you. To achieve the carnival look I'm going for, I want to paint red stripes onto this canopy. But before I do that, I need to lay out a bunch of masking tape. So I want my stripes to be equal to the size of my scallops, which are six and a quarter inches. So I'm laying out my masking tape six and a quarter inches apart, and the scallops that have masking tape on the inside of them, those are gonna be covered with paper to prevent the paint from getting onto it. And this is a really important step. Do your due diligence in laying out some good masking, cover not only the sides, but the scalloped and the flat end, because we don't want the paint to get anywhere on the white. There's no going back once we get red paint on that section. So take your time and be meticulous with your masking job. For my paint, I'm just using regular red spray paint. Um, and I think one coat of this in a nice even layer is gonna be enough to cover everything really nicely. Now there's a lot of different ways you can coat this. Um, they make special fabric spray paint you could give a try. It is a little bit more expensive. Um, or you can take acrylic paints and add fabric medium to them. That would also work really well, but this goes on really easy and really quick. And as long as you do a good masking job, you're gonna have a great paint job. So now that everything is completely dried, I'm gonna pull all my masking off and you finally get to see what the canopy looks like. For the canopy to attach to the PVC pipe frame, we need to make a pocket along the top and the bottom of the canopy so it can attach to that frame. So I'm gonna be doing that with some Velcro that's already got adhesive on it, and I'm gonna make a mark eight inches in from that top hem. I'm gonna make that in two spots just so I can make sure my Velcro is nice and square. And then I'll take my six inch piece of Velcro, remove one side of the sticky backing, and place it so that it's below that eight inch mark. So between seven and eight inches, I'll put the Velcro on and press it in place. And I do wanna make sure the Velcro on this top edge is right against that hem. Then I'm gonna pull the backing off the other side of the Velcro and take the top edge of my canopy and fold it down so that the corner of the canopy is right on the corner of the Velcro. And I wanna make sure this secures really nice and square to the Velcro. And then I'm gonna repeat all these steps evenly across the top of the canopy. So I ended up having five different sections of Velcro uh, spread evenly across the top and that's gonna make my pull pocket at the very top of this canopy. For the scalloped end, I also need this to attach to a pipe in the front so it doesn't flap away once this is on display. So I'm gonna measure six inches up from the very bottom part of the scallop. And this six inch mark is where it's gonna be touching my pipe on the front edge of the frame. So I'm gonna make a mark here and then grab another piece of Velcro and attach it just above that six inch mark. Now I want this one to not be sitting right on the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna inset it about an inch 
Because this Velcro is, is going to attach directly to a PVC pipe, that pipe has to go inside the fitting, and the fitting won't go in if there's Velcro stuck to it. So I'm going to attach this, and then once I've got all my Velcro across the bottom of my scallops, I'm going to pull those loose, and then taking one of my 66 inch PVC pipes, I'm going to set that directly on top of my Velcro. So half of the Velcro is going to be on the PVC, half of the Velcro is going to be stuck to the canvas. And now we finally get to assemble the frame. So I've got all of the pipes and the fittings I need to make one of the short sides of the frame. I'm gonna start by taking four 24 inch pipes and laying them out in a square. I'm then going to secure two of the corners using these three-way T's. So two pipes will go in and then that third opening needs to point upwards because that will eventually be the center of the tent. So I'm gonna do two of those on what will be the bottom that sits on the table. So once those are firmly put together, I'm gonna take two of my T's and use those to complete the square. So just make sure everything is nice and snug and the paint does make these fittings a little tighter. So that's why you see me pushing a little bit more on these. Um, but I do wanna make sure my T's are square to each other. So that's why I push them down on the table. And then I'm just gonna snug everything up and make sure it's square before grabbing my fifth 24 inch piece. And I'm just gonna put it into the top of this T here and then also grabbing the 18 inch piece into the top of this T. Now I'm going to take my two elbows and put them on the top of these two end pipes, making sure the end of it is also pointing up. Now I'm going to repeat this and make a second that's a mirror version of this, and that will be the second side of my tent. So this is what the two short sides look like standing upright, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure to the joints to make sure everything is fitting snugly together. And I'm just going to stand this up with the tall pipe in the back and I'm going to take my long pipes and just attach them to the bottom two fittings and this is going to stand up really easily and I would recommend assembling this on the floor. It's a lot easier than trying to chase it around assembling it on top of the table. So I'm just going to add the second side in the same way before grabbing the canopy and attaching it to the back. I already have the two long pipes inside the canopy, so all I have to do when assembling this is pull back the edge of the fabric and push the pipe into that 90 degree fitting. So here you can see rolling it back, putting it in securely, and then I can roll that fabric back over and cover a little bit of that joint, which I really love. So now I've got my front edge, which the pipe is Velcroed to the canopy. I'm gonna do the same thing, just flip the fabric back and then insert that pipe into the corner piece. Now because the fabric is velcro to that pipe, if you rotate that pipe, you can change the topness of the canopy. So if you want a little bit more droop, roll it backwards, a little tighter, roll it forwards. And now I can just pick up the entire frame and set it on top of a table. It's lightweight and easy to handle. Now if you are going to use this outside, I would recommend clamping it to the table so it doesn't blow away. I hope you were inspired by today's project. I'm so excited to have something like this in my event inventory because it's so versatile. Just by changing the canopy color and style, this can fit into a lot of different kinds of events and serve lots of purposes. And plus, it fits in my hatchback car, so all the better for that. If you enjoyed today's project, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you join our creative community. I make all kinds of different event props, decorations, as well as tutorials on balloon making and tips for party planning. So until the next time, check out some of the videos over here. And remember, stay creative. See ya.